Hi, this is Millie Kay, and it's Tuesday, May 14th, 2019. And the subject of today's video is reservoirs that feed into the Oroville Reservoir. And the picture that you're seeing on the screen is a picture of Lake Almanor. And it's one of the largest reservoirs up above Oroville. And I'll talk quite a bit about it but I really just want to give you an overview of the watershed and what reservoirs are up above Oroville. The best way to start is with this map. This shows the upper Feather River watershed, which is a subregion of the Sacramento Basin watershed. Um, and it, the upper Feather River watershed is what goes into Lake Oroville. So you're looking at the, the forks of the Feather River, because when they built the, the dam at Oroville, they dammed up the Feather River. So these forks all flow into Oroville. There's the South Fork, Middle Fork, and the North Fork. And off of the North Fork, you have the East Branch of the North Fork and the West Branch. And when you go all the way up the North Fork and get to the upper North Fork, um, that's where Lake Almanor is. This map does not show all of the reservoirs, but I'll give you uh, a quick idea of uh, what's up there. The South Fork has a reservoir called Little Grass Valley Reservoir. It's owned by South Feather Water and Power. There's also a couple more up there, Sly Creek and Ponderosa Reservoirs. These are small and don't contribute a lot to the inflow at Lake Oroville. And I'll give you those figures later of how much each of these forks flows in. And then the Middle Fork, there's two main lakes up on the Middle Fork, Frenchman Lake and Lake Davis. Those are both owned by the Department of Water Resources. So that's the Middle Fork. And then you have the, well, there's also Antelope Lake up here on the East Branch of the North Fork. That's also owned by the Department of Water Resources. So these three are owned by California Department of Water Resources. And I've made a video about them that I'll reference at the end of this uh, video. And then when you go on the North Fork, that, especially up here on this upper North Fork, that is Pacific Gas and Electric Territory. All of those reservoirs, dams, hydropower plants, tunnels, are part of PG&E's Stairway of Power up there. And I'll show you that specifically PG&E's Stairway of Power. I've also done a video about this, but this is a good view to show you the relative size of Lake Almanor. Um, Mountain Meadows Reservoir, also known as Walker Lake, flows into Lake Almanor. And then Lake Almanor has a dam, but and it has a spillway, but they don't use it because if they do, it floods out the town or towns below there. There's an outlet in the dam where they release a small amount of water into the river. Um, but for the most part, there's an intake in the lake and it feeds a tunnel that goes over to the Butt Valley Reservoir. It is Butt Valley. It's not Butte Valley. So there's the Butt Valley Reservoir is there. And then as it goes on down, and I won't talk about the power plants in this video, but that's what's up there on that upper North Fork is a system uh, for generating hydropower. And then there's the, the Belden Reservoir is here. You can see how small these are. And then the Rock Creek Reservoir keeps going down, Cresta and Poe and down here is Bucks Lake. So, and these, all of this comes down and flows into uh, Lake Oroville. 
then this west branch comes in there you know there are creeks and uh things that feed uh this west branch but it it doesn't have uh dams and power plants up there that i know of so it's uh feeds into the north fork right around where the town of paradise is and I am working on a map, it's a work in progress, where I've uh, located the reservoirs and these three with the red circles, those are the Department of Water Resources, Frenchman Lake, Lake Davis, and Antelope. And Lake Davis is the biggest one. I believe it, Lake Davis has a capacity of about 85,000 acre feet. Antelope is somewhere in the 20,000 acre feet. Not positive about Frenchman, maybe, I don't remember. Um, it's in my other video. So those all are on the middle fork. And then you can see that little grass valley reservoir down here, owned by South, um, Feather, Water, and Power. And then you can see all of pg and reservoirs up here. And, and you can see right there, that's the one to, that holds the most. And the statistics on Lake Almanor are, it's about 1,308,000 um, acre feet capacity. So, let me see what else I can tell you about Lake Almanor. Um, hold on, let me find it. Okay, here it is. Lake Almanor is, it impounds the North Fork of the Feather River. It's owned by PG&E. It's located in Plumas County. It uh, has an earth-filled dam that's 130 feet tall and 1250 feet long and as i said its reservoir capacity is 1,308,000 acre feet acre foot of water is an acre of water one feet deep surface area is 28,000 acres it's about 90 feet in depth and the name of the dam up there is Canyon Dam. And the catchment area for Lake Almanor is about a little over 500 square miles. So let's talk about that for a little bit. We're, we're used to looking at the Sierra Nevada as it feeds, um, let me go back to that map, as it feeds these forks of the Feather River Sierra Nevada being over here, but there's also the cast the bot the end of the Cascade Mountain Range has Mount Lassen, and the headwaters for this upper North Fork of the Feather River is at Mount Lassen, and let's go to Mount Lassen area, as you can see here. On this map, up here on this stairway of power, Lake Almanor, and then Mount Lassen Volcanic National Park is up here. And it's an active volcano. And it's about 10, a little over 10,000 feet in elevation. And it has some of the most snow of anywhere in California. And I'll show you a picture of it, some pictures from up there. These are from Google Maps. They've been submitted um, by people to Google and they're dated May. So I don't know if they were just uploaded in May, but it apparently this is what it looks like at this time of year up there at Lassen.
then you have to remember that not all of the snow melts. Some of it stays up there. And there's also four watersheds at Mount Lassen National Park. So some of the runoff of the western side of it is going to go down into another uh, watershed region. And it's not all going to go into Lake Almanor. It's hard to find statistics on, on these flows, but it's something to, uh, to look for because of the, the heavy snowpack that's up there. And it's not always reported what's going on up there at that upper North Fork. And I want to show you some statistics. Water from the upper Feather Watershed supplies approximately 3.2 million acre feet per year for downstream water users. The drainage area is roughly divided as follows. This is the critical part I wanted you to know. The North Fork, 60%, Middle Fork, 32%, South Fork, 4%, and West Branch, 4%. Average daily flow into Lake Oroville from each of these sub watersheds is, and then they've listed the average daily flows. North Fork, <coughs> Isabel, 3,200 cubic feet per second. Middle Fork, 1,500 cubic feet per second. And then the West Branch and the South Fork have a really minor amount compared to those for a total of over 5,000 cubic feet per second from um, the total of those sub watersheds flowing into Lake Oroville. And I think I have, yeah, the CDEC website for today, let me refresh it so it's current. As of the time of this video on May 14th at 1 p.m. The inflows are 11,652. So those are above average inflows. And while we're looking at this, you have the inflows of going toward 12,000, outflows a little over 9,000 cubic feet per second. That would be the Hyatt power plant because they're not running any water out of the spillway gates. And so what you have is um, the outflows from Lake Oroville are just a little smaller than the inflows. The elevation of the Oroville Reservoir right now is 889.17 feet in elevation. So just to go back to that, to know where that water is mainly coming from, it's coming mainly from the North Fork of the Feather River with a lesser amount coming from the Middle Fork where those Department of Water Resources reservoirs, those three reservoirs are, um, well, two of them come in on the Middle Fork and then there's one up there on the East Branch of the North Fork. And I don't really think too much about the West Branch and the South Fork if I'm looking at uh, where the water is going to come in, but it, you know, it does make a difference. So let's see, I think that pretty well covers what I wanted to show you. Um, let me go back one more thing to show you that downstream of Oroville, where we have Yuba City and Marysville, you have this upper Feather watershed is up here. The lower Feather River watershed is down here and there's sub regions for all of these things. Um, but I want to point out that these towns down below that are serviced by levees are, it's not just the Feather River that comes in you have 
the Sacramento coming down, even though it's from another watershed coming up from the Shasta area, people often wonder, what about Shasta? What does it have to do with Oroville? Well, that watershed is not going to come down into Lake Oroville. This is the Sacramento River over here. And as it comes down, it runs along the western edge of Sutter County, which is, Yuba City is the county seat of Sutter County. Yuba City and Marysville are separated by a bridge over the Feather River. And so you have Feather River coming down from Oroville. You have the Sacramento River coming from up north. And then you have the Yuba River flowing into the Feather River right near Marysville and Yuba City. And then the Feather River continues on and merges with the Sacramento River uh, before it gets to Sacramento around Verona is where it comes together. So I just wanted you to know that when there is a lot of precipitation and storms, uh, it's not just the water that would be coming out of Oroville that affects these downstream towns. Um, and when when storms are, are over that entire watershed up there, those inflows can come up exponentially. I'm thinking, let me find it. Like right now we have inflows of 11,652 cubic feet per second. In 1997 and 2017, um, just to pick two for instance, those flood events, that um, the cubic feet per second coming into Lake Oroville was more than 250,000 cubic feet per second. And that can happen pretty quickly when there are storms parked over the watershed. Um, so that's what I wanted to say about that. And I haven't given you any details about where the levels are now, but at least you will have a good idea of what to look for. So I really appreciate your views and I hope you will like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you later.